where there has been division, replace it with unity. And where there has been hate in our city, replace it with love. Uh, Jesus was a refugee, so he, he identifies with what the Haitians are going through. And uh, the Bible is, is, this is an easy sermon to do because the Bible is very clear on our mandate to stand for people who are oppressed and to love and welcome immigrants. I, I can't even begin to tell you how, how scared and um, anxious they are right now. And, and it could all be stopped um, if, if people would just admit that they've been misinformed, that this hasn't happened. It was a challenging week because we're not used to that in an American society where Haitians are targeting for something they don't do. They feel the threat. They feel they're not welcome. They feel people are talking about them. But one thing I can tell you, we are good people. We love walking. We love having fun. And we have good cuisine, good food. We're always laughing, dancing. Even though in the midst of uh, adversity, we're still having faith in God. We believe. We are strong in faith. We believe in God. We believe in love. We believe in Christ. And I think that's made the difference. God bless that pastor and those that are out there not demonizing and latching on to the lies that J.D. Vance and Donald Trump has continued to push to put people's lives in danger there in Springfield, the Haitian immigrants. And as you saw in that clip, I mean, that's showing how the church really should be conducting themselves. But instead... The church is conducting themselves, these evangelicals that are Trump evangelicals. Let's look at what they can or how they conduct themselves. For the battle is the Lord's. He will give you into our hands. You spirit of hell driving the Democrat Party. We order you helpless and non victorious. We will by the help of almighty God. We will win this election that all the earth may know that there is a living God. And I say, even as you told me to say in 2015 against Hillary Clinton, I now declare against Kamala Harris. Yes. Yes. That according to James 1.11, that her campaign is as grass and that she is even as the flower of the grass and that the burning, searing, exposing heat of God now causes her campaign and her herself to wither away, to wither away and to become as nothing that there would be exposure from the, from the radiance of who you are. And it would cause, Lord, her campaign to vanish. And as you can see in those two clips, Robin Bullock with his staff thinking he's still Moses and, and this other pastor, whoever this guy is, standing up there with Dutch sheets and all of these other people within this congregation. The hundreds of people and still worried about an election. That's all they worry about. And all it means is, is that they're willing to do whatever to take to put their golden calf, Mr. Trump, back into power. And this is a shame because you see nobody. I'm still searching the Internet for all of these Trump style prophets. Anyone that's always lifting this guy up to see if there's any prayers for those that are living in fear or those that are lives are in extreme danger thanks to the rhetoric 
from Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, Laura Loomer, all of these other people. Laura Loomer, as we saw there in the thumbnail, is this woman that was at the commiseration at the 9-11 standing next to Trump. She's made the news. She's a 9-11 denier. If you don't know nothing about this woman, she's a 9-11. She says it's an inside job. She's a white nationalist. She's buddies with Nick Fuentes, one of our buddies that we've talked about. We've shown him many times on here. I won't show him this time around, but we know Nick was at Stop the Steal. He's, he's deflated now because he realized Trump has lied about the election. So you can see that video if you want to see that on my channel. But she's uh, all of that. I have some more notes on here about her. She, yeah, she's a proud white, promotes proud white nationalism. She's a Islamophobe. She's uh, said the White House here recently would smell like curry. If Kamala Harris was elected, it would smell like curry and that the White House speeches will be facilitated via call center as to make indication that the call, that because of India, because call centers are in India. And, and, and she claims school shootings were staged. I mean, she's been kicked off on every platform. She hopped the fence at Nancy Pelosi's house and took some uh, Mexican uh, supposed to be uh, undocumented immigrants. They couldn't prove any of that, but jumped the fence, got in trouble over that. I mean, this woman's nuts. And this is who he's riding around with. Some people's accusing him of having an affair and things like that. I don't know what that's about, but all I know is she's nuts. And she's run, he wanted to hire her for this campaign. And everybody told him, no, 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 you can't hire this woman. It is that or that. So he's keeping her close to his side. And if you notice, as I said, none of these people that, are, you know, I've seen it from African-American pro uh, Trump style uh, 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 preachers or prophets or whatever you want to call them on YouTube. Seeing it from Latinos. See, I haven't seen. So basically, I haven't seen anything from none of these people. I haven't seen any kind of pushback. And saying, whoa, 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 you know, we need to pray for those people uh, that's what's going on with them living in fear and misinformation, saying they're eating cats and dogs and geese and all of this craziness. And they don't even eat that kind of stuff. And, and, and just to say that it's a racist of racist comment. And for her to set up at, at Laura Loomer to somebody on the most horrendous attack on American soil that took place and Trump to be hanging with her and evangelicals to still stand by this and don't say nothing. A lot of them are silent, ain't said one word about it. It shows you, like I said before, it shows you what's in here. It shows you what's in here. It shows you where they are as it pertains to people in society. And it shows you that they don't care about nobody but themselves. They don't care about the poor or they don't care about none of it. And I've got, I got the perfect scripture that the Lord gave to me a couple of weeks ago on this talking about the wicked, because I'm going to label these types of people that continue to stand by silent and allow society to be people to be demonized and, 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 and just mistreated. I'm going to call them wicked as the scriptures say. I want to read to you Psalms 10. Because Psalms 10 breaks down, talking about God's triumph over the wicked. Because they always, they got their version of wicked. But you know, anybody that professes to be a follower of Jesus Christ. and But at the same time, conducts themselves as a Taliban a uh, uh, leader of some sort and want to install Taliban tactics within society and brushing aside what the scriptures tell us, how to treat one another, how to treat, uh, you know, this everybody within society and how to respond and act within the government and all of that, of what the scriptures tell us. Anybody that want to go about it their own way with this nationalism, they're wicked. And let's read the scriptures here because it talks about, you know, in here, Arrogance, pride within here, arrogant pride, boasting, mistreatment of the poor, carefully devising plots, greedy friends, disdain and disrespect, disrespect for God, ignorance for pain, failure, misfortune, disrespect for his enemies and the righteous, curses, lies, 
trouble and evil speech, uh, uh, cold-blooded murder and the assumption that he would never be caught. Yeah, this, this sounds like some some somebody you know, and a lot of these people. So that we've been talking about. So it's you know it's chapter ten of Psalms. Go through, read it. I'm going to try to read it as fast as I can, so some of you can stand you stand with me. But I just want you to hear what this says. We close this video out. The wicked in his pride persecutes the poor. Let them be caught in the plots which they have devised. For the wicked boast of his heart's desire, for he blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. And the wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is, is, is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above and out of his sight. As for all of his enemies, he sneers at them. And he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing, deceit, and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. He sits in the lurking places of the villages. In his secret places, he murders the innocent, and his eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws them near into his net. He crouches and he lies low that the helpless may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see. And oh, arise, O oh Lord, O oh God, oh, lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? Uh, uh, he has said in his heart, you will not require an account. But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief to repay it by your hand till the helpless commits himself to you. Where we at? Uh, you are the helpless of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out the wickedness until you find none. And the Lord King, for, uh, King forever and ever, the nations have perished out of his, his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart you will uh, cause your ear to hear, to do justice to the fatherless and to the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. We're almost done. In the, in, the, uh, in the Lord, I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to the mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They made ready their arrow on the string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord in his holy temple. The Lord is in his uh, 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 throne in heavens. His eyes behold, his eyelids test the son of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked, he will rain coals, fire and brimstone and burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the right for the Lord is righteous and he loves righteousness and his countenance beholds the upright. You tell me who's the wicked ones based upon this scripture, because we have a whole lot of folks running around within the Christian dome and within this era of social media that profess to be lovers of the Lord. They profess to be given out the gospel. But at the same time, we know, based upon this right here, we see their evil deeds and how they're going about conducting themselves in society towards the people that was mentioned right here in the text. And may the Lord have mercy on their wicked souls. If they do not repent, they're going to find out what the Lord is all about because his word, his word right here, reigns true and you're not going to mistreat people you can hang around all of these types of people all you want you can hide behind your channel all you want and try to ignore certain things that are going on and try to portray things in another way and always try to make it a one sin factor but there's a whole lot of things going on in society that needs to be dealt with and people that are standing in powerful positions and places and have any type of influence that if any kind of harm comes to people 
based upon your words and your rhetoric and how you're going about it. May the Lord, I, I just pray. I, I, I just pray for, I pray for you. I, I pray that, you know, that I, I just don't know. I, I just, I, it's disgusting what's going on in society. It's disgusting what's going on with a lot of these people. And, you know, I just, you know, may the Lord have mercy on you because some of you out there refuse to repent. You continue to go to these events that support hate. You continue to stand by hate and you continue to promote hate and you continue not to speak up for the hate and shame on you. And, you know, we'll continue to call it out on this channel. We'll continue to take the devil head on and punch him right up between the chops. Evangelism for God is the channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.